فاشرف بي لاشتغال بالعلم ولا تبغي به ما عشت يا ذا بدلا ويا له من شرف عظيم الحمد لله رب العالمين له الحمد الحسن والثناء الجميل وشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له يقول الحق وهو يهدي السبيل وشهد أن سيدنا ونبينا محمد صلى الله عليه وعلى آله وأصحابه والتابعين لهم بإحسان إلى يوم الدين أما بعد وإن الإكسبينيشن أوف ذا كتاب من وصايا السلف للشباب The advice that the pious predecessors they gave to the youth and the youngsters We previously took three advices which they gave and inshallah ta'ala today we're going to take al wasiyatul rabi'ah the fourth advice and a couple of more inshallah ta'ala after this this advice inshallah is narrated by al-imam abu nu'aym al-asbahani in his kitab hiliyatul awliya wa tabaqatul asfiya on the authority of zayd ibn al-zarqa who said خرج السفيان يعني الثوري سفيان الثوري came out ونحن على بابه and we were we were at his door فقال سفيان الثوري said يا معشر الشباب أو youngsters تعجلوا بركة هذا العلم hasten and benefit from the opportunity of this knowledge فَإِنَّكُمْ لَا تَدْرُونَ لَعَلَّكُمْ لَا تَبْلُغُ لَا تَبْلُغُونَ مَا تُؤَمِّلُونَ مِنْهُ لِيُفِدْ بَعْضُكُمْ بَعْضًا تَعَجَّلُوا هَيْسْتًا بَرَكَةَ هَذَا الْعِلْمِ Meaning, hasten to the opportunity that you have today. You, today you're a youngster, you're a youth. And benefit from it. Benefit from it by attaining beneficial knowledge. Because when the person grows old and he ages, لا يكون عنده من النشاط. The person no longer has enthusiasm والذاكرة والقدرة. He no longer has memory, nor does he have the ability to endure a lot of things. And his memorization becomes weak. It's no longer as it used to be when he was young, when he was a youth. Additional to that is the responsibilities which he, he is carrying now, which he never used to have when he was young. The mas'uliyat, the duties and the chores that he has to come with. Whereas when the person is young and he's a youth, the person doesn't have any of that. Marhalatu shabab is a time that will go over fast in your life. So that's why Sufyan al-Thawri, rahimahullah, he said, تَعَجَّلُوا بَرَكَةَ هَذَا الْعِلْمِ Benefit from this opportunity that you have by attaining beneficial knowledge. Because, فَإِنَّكُمْ لَا تَدْرُونَ لَعَلَّكُمْ لَا تَبْلُغُونَ مَا تُؤَمِّلُونَ مِنْهُ Because, whilst you're young, you may dream and wish to attain this knowledge or to memorize this or to read this book but then you don't attain it. So it's upon you to strive hard and to work hard and to seek aid and support from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala he said in the Quran وَالَّذِينَ جَاهَدُوا فِينَا لَنَهْدِيَنَّهُمْ سُبُولَنَا وَإِنَّ اللَّهَ لَمَعَ الْمُحْسِنِينَ Those who strive in our cause. Allah says, لَنَهْدِيَنَّهُمْ We will guide them and we will guide them and we will guide them. Because the noon here is noon of Tawqeed. Allah says, we will guide them سُبُولَنَا to our path. وَإِنَّ اللَّهَ لَمَعَ الْمُحْسِنِينَ Allah is with those who come with excellency. So what is upon you is to strive hard. If you strive hard, you will attain what you're wishing for and what you want. 
And the last part of his advice is لِيُفِدْ بَعْضُكُمْ بَعْضًا Benefit one another. Meet one another in attaining beneficial knowledge from one another. الْعِلْمُ بَيْنَ الطَّلَبَةِ Knowledge is between the students of knowledge. And the rev revision of knowledge between young, uh, the students of knowledge. So this advice of Sufyan al thawriyu is directed at the youth. And it really shows us the concern that the Salaf who had ummah, the pious predecessors, they had towards the youth. Ya ma'ashara al-shabaab, youngsters, ta'ajjalu barakata hadha al-ilm, hasten to attaining this knowledge. فَإِنَّكُمْ verily you don't know. لَا تَدْرُونَ لَعَلَّكُمْ لَا تَبْلُغُونَ مَا تُؤَمِّلُونَ مِنْهُ You may not attain what you are looking for and what you're wishing for. لِيُفِدْ بَعْضُكُمْ بَعْضًا Benefit one another. Benefit each other by seeing your brother lacking something. Say, I can help you with this. And there is something that you have. Can you help me with it? الوصية الخامسة The fifth advice من وصايا السلف للشباب which is the advice of the salaf towards the youngster, the youth ما ورد عن الحسن البصري is what Hassan al-Basri said كثيرا ما كان يقول Hassan al-Basri used to say a lot يا معشر الشباب youngsters, youth عليكم بالآخرة Upon you is the day of judgment and the hereafter. فَطْلُبُوهَا Try to attain it. Try to look for the hereafter. فَكَثِيرًا رَأَيْنَا مَنْ طَلَبَ الْآخِرَةِ فَأَدْرَكَهَا مَعَ الدُّنْيَا We have seen a lot who tried to attain the hereafter, but Allah gave them a good portion of this dunya with it. وَمَا رَأَيْنَا But we have never seen أَحَدًا طَلَبَ الدُّنْيَا we have never seen a person who ran after this dunya, who ran after attaining this dunya, فَأَدْرَكَ الْآخِرَةِ But he reached the hereafter with the dunya that he was trying to attain. So this is a very important advice from this noble Imam, Al-Imam Hassan al-Basri, rahimahullah. And he directed it at the youth. He directed it at the youth, telling them, to make their aspiration and their drive directed towards the hereafter and to strive to attain it and to busy your time with what will get you, with what will get you closer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and that which will please him because if you do that if you run after the hereafter if you make the hereafter your aspiration and if you run after what will please Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala Allah will give you and Allah will favor you by allowing you to attain a portion of this dunya. But what it doesn't mean, his speech, Hassan al-Basri's speech does not mean that the person leaves off coming with مَا يُقِيمُ دُنْيَاهُ that the person leaves off coming with what will establish his worldly needs. Providing for his family, placing a roof over his wife and his kids, and placing clothing over himself. Hassan al Basri is not saying in any way, form, or shape that the person should remain ala al akhareen, that he should run after the begging the people and in need of the people. Rather, it is not harmful that a Muslim, that he works, he gets himself a provision. He attains the dunya. But what is it that he's talking about then? What he's talking about is, is that the person and takuna dunya hammahu, that the dunya is your complete aspiration and your complete drive. And that the dunya is your objective and your aim and your purpose. And that the dunya is your ultimate knowledge. That's all you know. And it used to be from the Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam's dua وَلَا تَجْعَلِ الدُّنْيَا أَكْبَرَ هَمِّنَا وَلَا مَبْلَغَ عِلْمِنَا 
Oh Allah, don't make this dunya our ultimate aspiration. Wala mablaga ilmina and don't make it our ultimate knowledge. All, all that we know is the dunya. Al Imam Al Tirmidhi narrated this in his Sunan, and Sheikh Muhammad Nasir al Din al Albani, rahimahullah, he graded this hadith to be Hassan in his Kitab Al Kalim Al Tayyib. Also, the Messenger sallallahu alaihi wasallam he said, "Innaka in tadaru." ورثتك أغنياء خير من أن تذرهم عالة يتكففون الناس. For you to leave your offspring, your lineage, rich, not in need of the people, is better than to leave them عالة يتكففون الناس. To leave them behind, poor, begging the people. So Hassan al basriyus statement is not talking about that. But what he's talking about is making the dunya your aspiration. The dunya your ultimate goal and purpose in which you live for. The person can work, he can make money, even if that money becomes a lot. That's not what Hassan al basri is talking about. Anyone who makes the akhirah, my beloved brothers and sisters, hammahu al-akhirah, he makes the hereafter his ultimate goal. Jama'a Allahu alayhi, Allah will gather for him. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will gather his affairs for him. Wa'atatu dunya wa hiya raghiba. The dunya will come running after him. But the person, who places and makes the dunya his ultimate goal. جَعَلَ اللَّهُ فَقْرَهُ بَيْنَ عَيْنِهِ Allah will place poverty in front of his eyes. وَلَمْ يَأْتِهِ مِنَ الدُّنْيَا And he will not attain from this dunya إِلَّا مَا كَتَبَهُ اللَّهُ عَزَّ وَجَلَّ لَهُ And he will only attain from this dunya that which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has written, that which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has written for, for him. الْوَصِيَّةُ السَّادِسَةُ the sixth advice, min wasaya as salafi rahimahumullahu li shabab. The seventh, I'm sorry, the sixth advice, the sixth advice that the pious predecessors gave towards the youth, and that is maja'an uqba ibn abi hakimin. That uqba ibn abi hakimin qala, he said, kunna najlisu ila awn ibn abdillahi. We sat towards Awn ibn Abdullahi. Fayakulu lana, he would say to us, Ma'ashar al Shabab, O youngsters. Qadra'ayn al Shabab yamutun. We have seen the youngsters dying. Fama yun tadaru bil hasadi ida belagal minjalu. The harvest is not awaited. If it reaches the minjal, the minjal is the uh, the harvesting machine that's used. And he would wipe over his bed. What he's trying to say here is that if the person ages, your death is close. That every single moment of your life, you're more closer to death. Don't be fooled and be tricked by those who Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given them a long life. And don't be deceived by them. And so when you see them, you become short in many matters and you delay in so many things, assuming and thinking that you are going to live for a very long time. As the poet said, That 
The poet, he said, one person, Allah gives him a long span of a life. One person is given a long, long life. And many people are deceived by that person's age. And what they forget is من يموت من الشباب, the youngsters who are dying. That one or two people who live a very long life is what the people get deceived by. But they forget the thousands who are dying young. Don't be somebody who's like that. ولذلك the Messenger صلى الله عليه وسلم when he advised the noble companion Abdullah ibn Umar about the affairs of this dunya and the Prophet said to him كن في الدنيا كأنك غريب أو عابر سبيل be in this world كن في الدنيا كأنك غريب be in this world as though you're a stranger أو عابر سبيل or a person who's crossing a road Abdullah ibn Umar from that day onwards, what did he say? إِذَا أَمْسَيْتَ فَلَا تَنْتَظِرِ الصَّبَاحِ If evening comes, don't wait for the morning. وَإِذَا أَصْبَحْتَ And if the morning comes, فَلَا تَنْتَظِرِ الْمَسَاءِ Don't wait for the evening. Because what he realized is that death comes more to the youngsters than it comes to those who are aged. The people who die, the majority of them are the youngsters and the youth. وَلِذَلِكَ ibn al-Jawzi رَحِمَهُ اللَّهِ In his great book, Sayyid al-Khatir, page 240, he said, It is obligatory. يَجِبُ عَلَى مَنْ لَا يَدْرِي مَتَى يَبْغَتُهُ الْمَوْتِ أَنْ يَكُونَ مُسْتَعِدَّا وَلَا يَغْتَرَّ بِالشَّبَابِ وَالصِّحَةِ فَإِنَّ أَقَلَّ مَنْ يَمُوتُ الْأَشْيَاخِ وَأَكْثَرُ مَنْ يَمُوتُ الشُّبَّانِ وَلِهَذَا يَنْدُرُ مَنْ يَكْبُرُ Ibn al-Jawzi said, It is obligatory upon the one who doesn't know when death is going to come to him suddenly for him to be prepared. It is obligatory on that person to be ready since you don't know when death is going to come to you suddenly. And not to be deceived by the young age that you're in and the health that you have. فَإِنَّ أَقَلَّ مَنْ يَمُوتُ الْأَشْيَاخِ Because the ones who really die, the rare ones who die are the elders. وَأَكْثَرُ مَنْ يَمُوتُ The majority of the people who die are who? الشُبَّان The, old, uh, the youngsters and the youth. وَلِهَذَا يَنْدُرُ مَنْ يَكْبُرُ And so because of that, it's even rare those who age. You rarely find a person aging. Sit down and ponder today and look at your family member. How many people have actually passed the age of 40? You would realize and you will come to realize the Mu'ammirin, those who are aged, are qilla, they're little in number. And the majority of the people they died في مرحلة الشباب أو الطفولة they died at the age of between 40 and birth the majority of the people die in that age it is rare those who pass or it's very little those who pass the age of 40 look at your own family members الوصية السابعة The seventh advice من وصايا السلف From the advices of the salaf للشباب towards the youth ما جاء عن قابوس ابن أبي ضبيان It is narrated from قابوس ابن أبي ضبيان and this you can find in Kitab Al-Ilm by Abu Khaythama Tazuhair ibn Harb. And it's the 80th statement. He said, صَلَّيْنَا يَوْمًا خَلْفَ 
One day we prayed behind Abi Dabyan, Salat al-Ula, the first prayer. وَنَحْنُ شَبَابٌ كُلُّنَا مِنَ الْحَيِّ إِلَّا الْمُؤَذِّنِ We were all youngsters from the city, from the town, from the village, except the Mu'addin. فَإِنَّهُ الشَّيْخِ was an elderly individual. فَلَمَّا سَلَّمَ الْتَفَتَ إِلَيْنَا When he finished a prayer, he looked at us. ثُمَّ جَعَلَ يَسْأَلْ الشباب He then started to ask the youth, the youngsters, مَنْ أَنْتَ Who are you? مَنْ أَنْتَ Who are you? فَلَمَّا سَأَلَهُمْ When he finished asking, asking them, قَالَ He then said to them, and he said this in a, in a way of what? عَلَى وَجْهِ الْحَثِّ وَالتَّشْجِيعِ وَالتَّنْشِيطِ لَهُمْ He said it from the angle of encouraging them, placing enthusiasm in them. He said to them, إِنَّهُ لَمْ يُبْعَثْ نَبِيٌّ إِلَّا وَهُوَ شَابٌ No messenger was ever sent out to a people except he was a youngster, except that he was a youth. وَلَمْ يُؤْتَ الْعِلْمَ خَيْرٌ مِّنْهُ وَهُوَ شَابٌ وَلَمْ يُؤْتَ الْعِلْمَ And knowledge was not given. خَيْرٌ مِّنْهُ وَهُوَ شَابٌ Except that he was a youth. Better than except that he was a youth. So what he's trying to tell them is, and he's trying to bring to their attention is, اغتنام خيرية الشباب وبركته To benefit from this particular period of time in which they are in. مرحلة الشباب The stage of youth, being a youngster. And it's an opportunity, a great opportunity to benefit from and to take provision. And to benefit from the power and the strength and the energy which you have directing it towards something positive that you can harvest its efforts when you grow old. I'm going to conclude bi-idhnillah al kareem on the eighth advice that the Salaf of this Ummah gave towards the youth. And that is ma rawahu al-Imam Ahmad fi kitabih. It is that which al-Imam Ahmad narrated in his kitab al-Wara' an Abdul al-Wahhab al-Thaqafi. Abdul al-Wahhab al-Thaqafi, he said, خرج علينا علينا أيوب السختياني أيوب السختياني came out on us فقال he said يا معشر الشباب أو oh youngsters احترفوا احترفوا means get a provision get a job لا تحتاجون أن تأتوا أبواب هؤلاء You are not in need of coming to the doors of these people So in this book Imam Ahmad rahimahullah authored it and he brought this powerful statement of who Ayyub al sakhtiyaniyu the noble Imam which is that which he said to the youth and the youngsters have a hirfa, have a provision, a profession. Have a profession in which you gain and you attain wealth. So you can provide for yourself. And so that you can provide for your family and your children. So that you as a youngster are not a what? Alatan al akharin. That you are not one who begs and asks others and takes from them. Because if you learn a profession now that you're young and you attain that, when you grow old, you're not going to need to go to so-and-so and ask him for money or wealth. And you won't need to go to so-and-so and ask him for something. Rather, you have your own knowledge Whenever you need it, you will result to that and you will reap its uh, fruits and the effort that you've put in when you were young. Because when you grow old, you can't then embark on teaching yourself a profession. Your brain no longer works as it used to work when you were young. So what you can see from this is Salaf Wahadil Ummah, the pious predecessors, 
they were sincere advisors towards the youth. They even advised them in making sure that they attained their portion of this dunya. And so this is something that we say to the youngsters and the youth as well. Ihtarifu, have a profession. The more you study the deen, you should realize the more that you should be self-sufficient. That you don't need the people. And that you don't come knocking on the people's doors. That you have your own, your own knowledge. If you look at the ulama, if you look at the companions, even if you look at the prophets, they had their jobs. Every single prophet had a profession. If you look at the ulama of our time, Sheikh Muhammad Nasir al-Din al-Albani, he used to fix watches. He used to fix watches. And when he made his daily income, he would leave, rahimahullah, the shop and he would close it. And he would go to Maktabat al-Zahiriyyah and he would sit there and read and study. Inshallah ta'ala, I'm going to conclude there bi idhnillahi al-kareem. Anything which I have said that was wrong or incorrect is from me and shaitan and Allah and his messenger are free from it. Subhanaka Allahumma bihamdik. Ashhadu an la ilaha illallah. Astaghfiruka wa atubu ilayh.